From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and welcome to our Memorial Day broadcast. We thank you for joining us. The interior of Alaska joined the rest of the nation Monday in commemorating Memorial Day with various activities. News Center 11's Daryl Lewis begins our coverage from Veterans Memorial Park downtown. Ready? Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. I'm in the service years ago because my uncle served and they came back from the war and there was no parade for them. There was no honor for them. And today we honor those that have passed before us and those that right now are serving and that don't have anybody to honor them when they do come home. So today we need to stop and think about our future and about how we got here. And it was the sacrifice of great men and great women out there that allowed us in this nation to be free. Some I spoke to today say the Memorial Day holiday has been seen over the years as nothing more than just that, a time off, and not one centered around embracing the true meaning. I think we, I think we should have a lot of better turnouts than we've been getting, <laughs> but they, they soon forget. <laughs> a, it's a community trait that we should still uh, continue for years and years and years because uh, once we, we leave, I'm a father, and uh, I know I have a son that's in, uh, he's 15, so I have to instill those, those, uh, those honorable traits that as we as a community come together and we can honor the fallen. Birch Hill was also the scene today for American flags, bouquets of flowers, and people paying their proper respects on Memorial Day. Even though the ceremonial flyover from the Air Force was canceled due to sequestration budget cuts, powerful singing and moving speeches, along with professional drill teams, as well as a 21-gun salute, made the occasion that much more impressive. The ceremony was attended by veterans from all the wars and their loved ones, along with active military representatives from both Fort Wainwright and Eielson Air Force Base. It'll tell you that hope and freedom are our nation's greatest exports. And the sacrifice the U.S. military has given them a debt of gratitude they can never repay. Memorial Day is not just the day we pay respects to national sacrifice. It's the day that the entire free world pays respect to American sacrifice. Memorial Day observations continued over at Pioneer Park this afternoon. The holiday weekend marks the official opening of the park and its many activities. The U.S. Army Alaska's 9th Army Band performed a string of military favorites before Lathrop's ROTC presented the colors. City Councilman John Eberhardt was the guest speaker for today's remembrance. Eberhardt gave a brief history of the origins of Memorial Day and also the significance of the wearing of red poppies during this day. The councilman continued noting the Latin phrase e pluribus unum as fitting for this national day of remembrance. From the first Alaskans and Native Americans to the later colonists and immigrants, despite our diversity, we become one nation and when challenged with time of war, we've come together successfully. Memorial Day is about reconciliation. It's about a time for us to come together, to honor, to pay homage to those who pay the ultimate price. Early this morning, a group of deployed soldiers returned home from Afghanistan. This Memorial Day return was special to all, and before they were released, they also remembered those who didn't return home with them. In the early hours this morning, as many were sleeping, a company of deployed soldiers were quietly welcomed home from a seven-month deployment to Afghanistan. From the 472nd Military Police Company, their spouses waited in anticipation to hold their loved one once again. It kind of feels like I'm about to like meet them all over again. Like It just feels like all new. So, I mean, I don't really get to see his face ever or anything, so, but we did it. One spouse said it's the camaraderie that helped her to get through the deployment. It's been hard and easy because I also belong to the 472nd until recently. So both me and my husband are both MPs. I just got out to raise our son. 
uh, so it was easy being with the company. Before the soldiers were dismissed and in honor of Memorial Day, USARAC Deputy Commander Colonel Mark Freitag noted the importance of remembering those who didn't return home with the group. The uh, soldiers standing before you, I just want to remind you all how great an opportunity it is to serve this country. You've made us all so very, very proud. Today's Memorial Day, we're going to take some time later on to remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. And so in this case, we just want to remember those soldiers who have gone before us who did not have an opportunity to return home. Well, when we come back, an Alaska Airlines passenger tries to make an exit while in flight. And a local protest of genetically modified foods. Those stories are next. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Memorial Day broadcast. An unidentified minor child was killed late Sunday in an ATV accident. That's according to a news release issued by the Alaska State Troopers. Around 6 p.m., troopers received a report of a collision in two rivers off of China Hot Springs Road. They say the young driver apparently lost control of the machine and flipped it. Troopers say the driver was killed in the rollover. And passenger, also a minor child, was thrown from the machine and sustained minor injuries. Troopers say both riders were wearing helmets. The body of the child was sent to the state medical examiner's office in Anchorage for autopsy. There will be an open house Tuesday on plans to bring North Slope natural gas to the Fairbanks area. The meeting will start at 5.30 p.m. in the Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly Chambers. The session is sponsored by the Alaska Energy Authority and the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority. Residents will be able to meet with State Commerce and Economic Development Commissioner Susan Bell and with Jean Terrio of the Alaska Energy Authority. On Sunday evening, the Fairbanks Fire Department responded to an alarm at the Courthouse Square located off of Cushman Street. When fire units arrived, they found audible alarms ringing, air in the building had a light haze of smoke, and a sprinkler was active in one of those offices. Investigation revealed the fire had occurred in a wall ventilation unit. Indications are a motor had possibly seized and overheated igniting paper filters. The fire had spread out of the ventilation unit and ignited nearby combustibles. The office suffered minor fire damage and some smoke and water damage as well. Passengers tackled a man who tried to open an emergency exit on Alaska Airlines flight early this morning. Witnesses say 23-year-old Alexander Michael Herrera was trying to open the latch of an emergency exit. The plane was on final approach to Portland on a flight that originated in Anchorage. Two passengers jumped on Herrera and tied him to a seat with shoestrings and seatbelt extensions. The plane landed safely and Herrera was then arrested. The emergency door has two latches. It already had pulled the bottom latch and his head was up against the uh, baggage compartment. Um, I put him in a, I guess a choke hold and kind of, kind of went up over the seat a bit and brought him down to the ground. About 100 protesters marched Saturday in downtown Fairbanks to voice their concerns about genetically modified foods. Organizers of the March Against Monsanto say they want to spread awareness about the harmful effects of genetically modified foods or organisms. Food companies have claimed to use the seeds or animals that have been genetically engineered to increase the world's harvest. Monsanto company based in St. Louis said its seeds improve agriculture by helping farmers produce more from their land while conserving resources such as water and energy. It's our right to know what's in our food, you know. If it's created in a laboratory, we need to know about it. Um, disease and illnesses are on the rise since GMOs have been introduced into the, our food supplies in the early 90s. Everything's just been at a steady rise and... You know, uh, we need more testing. The man accused of killing two grandparents and sexually assaulting the couple's two-year-old great-granddaughter in Anchorage made his first court appearance Sunday afternoon. 24-year-old Jerry Active is accused of killing 73-year-old Touch Chea and his 71-year-old wife Sorn Sreep at their apartment while the couple was babysitting their great-granddaughter. Active is charged with two counts of murder in the first degree, two counts of second degree murder, sexual assault, sexual abuse of a minor, and burglary. Bail was set at $1 million. 
All right, Joe, so I bet covering sports in this almost 24-hour sun is quite some fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's been, a, it's been great, man. You know, softball, baseball, mm -hmm. soccer, you know, and fortunately some teams are going on and some will be staying home. We have the outcome of the final conference games for our softball and baseball teams. You're going to see who's going to be going to state. And later we hit the Mitchell Raceway for opening night of the GFRA. That and more coming up. Hello, Interior Alaska. Joe Cook here in the Sports C4 on this Memorial Day, and it's Monday. So let's get into the weekend recap. Every now and again, a team is in a no-win situation over the weekend. That pretty much sums up what happened to North Pole's baseball team. The Patriots faced West Valley on Saturday for what could have been the MAC number two seed in a trip to state. The Patriots were motivated and rolled to a 19-7 win over West Valley. Adam Norton and Jason Donald had four RBIs apiece to lead the Patriots with 11 hits in their attack in the win after some number crunching even though the Wolfpack lost they won the tiebreaker based on runs allowed against conference opponents North Pole allowed 71 this season West Valley just 35 the Allison and Delta games didn't count because they didn't play enough conference games North Pole would have one would have had to win by more than 30 runs Saturday to secure a state berth West Valley's Defense proved to be key in this short in this shortened year, and despite the loss after playing five games in three days, they will go on to the state tournament. All the teams uh, were all about even over the course of the season, but I think scheduling had a lot to do with how the outcome ended up. I'm happy that we were able to get in the season at all. It didn't um, appear we would at the beginning, but we did. All in all, it was a good season for everybody. We're going to be the number two team going to state. So we do get to go to we do get to go to Anchorage and be a part of the state tournament, which is a big plus. This is a young team. We're going to try and use this advantage to go down to state for that experience, and uh, try and show some maturity and watch other teams and see how they do it, and use it as a learning experience so that they can raise their level of the game. And when you think of successful high school programs, the Monroe Rams basketball team comes to mind. But now you can add Lathrop softball. The Malamutes completed a perfect season over the weekend with three wins, 8-1 against Wasilla, 10-0 shutout of Juno Douglas, and 10-4 over Hutch. The Malamutes went 11-0 in the Rail Belt Conference and 18-0 overall. The perfect season also earned them their first ever conference title. The Malamutes are the number one overall seed for the large schools in the ASAA State tournament West Valley will be the three seed and another milestone if you will the Hutchinson Hawks just a second year team went four and two in the MAC and will be going to state along with the Allison Ravens in the small schools state tournament in the fourth place game in girls soccer in the uh, ASAA state tournament on Saturday West Valley could not get revenge in a rematch with South Anchorage both teams met in last year's state final and South wins again this time six to one Madison Akis prevented the shutout this is the lowest finish in, the, in West Valley's seven trips to state. It's also a hit coach Greg, Gis, Greg Gibson's last game. He's been coaching West Valley for 15 seasons. The Diamond Lynx won this year's state title 3-1 over service. On the boys' side, North Pole was eliminated Friday after a 4-1 loss to Juno Douglas. South Anchorage won the boys' state title in a 3-0 victory over Colony, giving them five state championships since the tournament started in 2004, which is a state record. Now, the ruckus in the muckus was this weekend, but there was another event Saturday night that had racers in the dirt, if you will. The Greater Fairbanks Racing Association had their opening night at Mitchell Raceway. The dirt track held up after a rough start in the heat races, but hey, they got them in. There were two heats in the main event race in the mini stock sprint car, B stock, dollar stock, and modified classes. Number 66 was the first in B stock. The number 17 car won the dollar stock main event, and the number 15 car won the mini stock main event, and number 46 won the modified class. We talked to a couple of drivers in the pit, including one guy who didn't think he could make it through the main event in the sprint class, but came away with a win in the season opener. At the first heat, we lost uh, number six cylinder, spark plug broke, and wasn't running for crap, and then came out in the main event and just wanted to win, so. That's what we did. You know, rookie out here today, uh, what's it like to be out here on opening weekend? It was really fun, exciting. What are you going to do in your next race that you probably did in this one? Go faster and just, yeah, just do better than I did tonight. I've been gone for two years. Coming back to, for a win, it, the bug has bitten me again. 
So we'll, I'll be back out here again and uh, we'll see what happens. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks to all the veterans and service members here and abroad for what you do for us. Happy Memorial Day. Mike Schultz has your full weather forecast coming up next, and we'll catch you next time. Welcome back again, everyone. This is Mike Schultz with you. We're looking at the weather and what a beautiful day it was for Memorial Day. Celebrations all around the area. A few clouds out there, but all in all, very nice temperatures around 80 degrees. That's going to be the trend all the way through the week, it looks like right now. And no real precipitation expected, no thunderstorms, just lots of warm temperatures. And you can see why on our satellite picture here. As you can see, we're looking at a little bit of activity way down to the south. But for the most part, high pressure once again, the good guy here keeping everything out and looking really good. Now, as far as temperatures go this time of year, here's what the normal high is. The normal high is 65. Well, we were up to 80 degrees today. The record high was 82 in 2011. Normal low is 42. We got down to about 49 last night, a record low, 28, 1927. And the sunrise and sunset works out to 20 hours and 12 minutes. Sunrise this morning was at 345 if you got up that early. What's going on across the rest of the state? Not too bad. You see lots of sunshine over southeast Alaska, a few clouds around Kodiak Island. Over the west side of the state, again, partly cloudy to clear skies, a little cooler around Nome. Barrow at cloudy skies 33 and Fort Yukon 77, lots of sunshine. Lower 48 weather, a little bit of activity going on, mainly in the form of showers and afternoon thunderstorms, nothing really organized, some rain across the Pacific Northwest, the Central Plains, and then over the East Coast, uh, things are looking pretty good uh, after their weekend weather where some places in Vermont and upstate New York got close to three feet of snow. Can you believe that? All right, here's what's going on on our satellite and radar. You can see everything's kind of diminishing in its intensity, although some more storms are developing across parts of Texas, and there's the showers over the Pacific Northwest. And the overall outlook is calling for, again, the jet stream to remain right around the middle part of the country, which means a divider of the warm humid air to the south and the cooler wetter air to the north, and that's going to cause for some widespread thunderstorm activity to develop. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies at Barrow, cloudy skies in Nome, and some isolated showers around the Fort Yukon area. Here in the interior, we'll be looking at a few showers possible for the Fairbanks area, mainly in the higher elevations, partly sunny skies at Healy. Over southeast Alaska, mainly cloudy skies for both Juneau and Ketchikan. While out to the southwest, it looks like a Rain for Cold Bay and Kodiak with cloudy skies at Bethel. And over the south central regions, Anchorage is looking at uh, sunny skies uh, all along with Valdez and Homer. And uh, not too bad, 70 degrees there. Here's your uh, pollen count for today. And once again, you can see the trees are starting to work their way up toward the high levels. And I think tomorrow they're going to be at the high levels with, uh, once again, mold, weeds, and grass at low levels. So it's not too bad. Here's your forecast for tonight. 49 for the overnight low, partly cloudy skies, isolated showers possible. We'll do it all over again tomorrow with a high of 80 degrees, maybe even more possibly. And the extended forecast, you got to love these temperatures, 82, 83, all the way through Friday at least, and a little bit of cooler air moving in. Maybe some showers also in the picture. And overnight lows, once again, will be very, very warm. In fact, way above for this time of year in the low to mid 40s, even upper 40s in some areas. So it was a great day today for all the Memorial Day uh, celebrations. I agree, 80s. Yeah, I Joe, agree. did you think 80s you'd ever see it? We told you about it. Actually, I never thought this day would come, so <laughs> I'm, I'm just excited. That what about all great. the sunlight? Yeah. I'm still trying to adjust to that. It hasn't mm -hmm. gotten to like, you know, a, a deal breaking point yet. Oh, right. Okay. It's, it's now fine. you just got to battle the mosquitoes. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're a lot bigger than the ones in Virginia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're the first generation, second generation. They're the ones that'll get you. The smaller ones. Yeah. yeah but I think uh, they all get you pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah, yeah, true. That is true. They track them on radar. <laughs> Very good. All right, that will wrap up this Memorial Day edition of our broadcast. We are glad you could join us. But before we go, we would like to take the opportunity to thank our military men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice and service to our nation. And while we're at it, a thank you to all the men and women who have or are currently serving. And I have to include my husband, Clint. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And you can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at western11.com. And that will do it from all of us here at the News Center. If you did not have a chance to see some of the memorial services, we're going to leave you with that. Have a good evening.